So today we're going to go over some more video editing jobs. And as always, I am going to go to ytjobs.co and take a look and see what's out there. Now, if you have any websites that I should take a look at, let me know down in the comment section so I can take a look and give you guys some reviews and some of the job postings I find there. Or also, if you find anything that either sounds ridiculous or if you genuinely have questions about a job posting, also let me know in the comment sections or send them to my business email that is down in the description. I can take a look and then I can make a video on it in the future. But all right, if you want to follow along, go to ycjobs.co and let's get started. So we're going to first start with somebody called Lost and Unbound. So taking a look at their channel, they are a NBA kind of documentary style channel. They make videos about the NBA, some highlight clips about players, some plays that happen and what have you. And taking a look at the job posting, you know, it, it isn't the best job posting, but there are some pros and cons to this that I want to share. The first thing I want to talk about is the pay. The pay itself sounds amazing. So $750 to $1,500 per project. Like that is already such a great price for anyone that's interested in the job. But I still have some questions about that because, for example, why is the job pay gap so big? Like what is the difference between a $750 video to him as well as $1,500? Does it depend on, you know, just how well the video performs? Is this a performance-based thing? Is this more just the more work I put into the edit, the more I'll get paid? Like that does seem a little weird to me. The next great thing is that it's remote, which is great. You don't have to move anywhere for the job. You can just do it at home as long as you have the means to do so. Now, those pros aside, there are a couple questions I have about this job posting that I don't understand. So the first one being, it doesn't list what software I should learn for the job. This is a concern for me personally, because depending on who I'm working with, sometimes it's gonna be a collaborative effort. Sometimes I'm gonna pass the project along to somebody else, or sometimes the creator wants to keep the project files on hand so they can edit stuff later or touch it on later. So the question is then, what should I be using? But I also asked this question because it says in the job posting that I could either work solo or I can work with an assistant or a second person, but who is that second person? Is this somebody they're gonna bring on? Are you saying that I can have an assistant or something? Or is the creator themselves gonna be helping alongside? Like, it, I don't know, I just, I don't understand that part, so I would like more information on that. The other thing the job description says is that I need to be the one doing research as well as sourcing clips for the content. Now, the thing is this, the reason this concerns me is because not every editor out there knows about the NBA, nor even cares about the NBA. So my question for this would be, okay, are you asking me then to research, and research means finds and sources, source clips, but on the other hand, I am not an NBA person. So what happens when an editor doesn't really know too much about the NBA, but wants to do the job, and they can do the job? Are you gonna be helping them alongside so they can learn? Are you gonna give them a little period of catching up with them and kind of learning what it is that they should be finding? Like, the thing is just also sourcing clips takes a lot of time. So is this gonna be factored into the pay? Hence why the pay is $750 to $1,500 per project. Like, yeah, just that, that doesn't sit too well to me because sourcing stuff really adds on time. So that'd be something to definitely ask. And then like always, I always wonder when people say per project, I know they usually mean per video, but sometimes people want the YouTube video and then they'll ask you alongside that to quickly do some, some YouTube shorts or some TikToks and what have you. So it's nice to just know what exactly does per project mean to them. But all right, for this first job posting, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now, the biggest redeeming quality about the posting is the fact that the pay is very attractive. So I really would like that pay for any of you out there that are editors and want to apply for this job. But here's the thing, I personally would not be applying to this job, but if you are interested in doing so yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description alongside all the other job postings in this video. But here are some questions that I feel you should ask. You should ask, why is there a huge pay gap? And it says per project. Does that mean one YouTube video? Or are we intending to do some shorts alongside that? Ask about the specific software that you should be learning, as well as ask them about what they meant that you can either work solo or work with an assistant. I don't really understand what that means either. So be sure to ask that. What happens if I'm qualified for the job, but I don't know too much about the NBA? Are they willing to let you learn so you can be more prepared for the job? Actually, I would say those are all the questions right there. So if you're interested in applying for the job, again, link in the description. I wish you the best of luck and I hope this works out for you. So this next job posting comes from It's Shawnee. So they are a creator 
that has 7.12 million subscribers, which is great. And if you look at their job posting, they definitely wrote a lot for this, which is fantastic. And they even have like your ideal candidate section. They even have your job requirements skill laid out. Like I really do like just how much was written in this job posting, given the fact that some people don't even put that much effort into theirs. Now, by looking at the channel already, I can tell that this is a high energy channel, kind of like a Mr. Beast situation, probably a appealing to a younger demographic, which there's nothing wrong with that. But knowing that already and reading the job description, here are some pros and cons to this one. So one thing that I really do like is that they're encouraging you to take ownership and to be creative with the videos. You know, it's always really good to get that kind of a leeway when you're editing because you don't want to feel like you're just there to be a yes man to the creator. Sometimes they want you to be a partner and actually be creative alongside them. So that is always a plus. You do indeed have a choice to work either remotely or it says in office. And as I already mentioned, I really like the amount of detail they went into this job posting, you know, writing that this is IRL contents. They want you to be really good with the music, the sound effects, the graphics on screen. It's kind of like they really do understand the demographic and the niche that they're in. So it makes it a lot easier for you to understand who you need to be watching to be caught up to a little more up to date with like what's popular in that genre. They actually wrote stuff that matters to us editors. Like they actually told us they want us to know the Google suite, which is good. I assume that's Google Docs and whatnot. And they also want us to learn Adobe products such as Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Photoshop. And they also did leave videos for references down below, which is great. And it's good because not only was it a video of the creator themselves, the It's Shani channel, but they also linked to another creator who has a similar style that you can kind of learn who to be watching and adapt to. Now, those are all the pros that I found. Let's move on to the concerns. So the first thing that concerns me is the fact that this job says that this is a part-time job, but yet there's one or two videos being expected to be make a week, or at least ideally that's what they would like. But with the amount of work that I'm seeing already in these videos, I kind of worry that this is a, they want you for part-time, but it's going to lead to a full-time situation. Uh, let, let me explain why. So let's assume you get the footage on Monday, right? So you work on the video Monday and let's say it takes you two days to create this kind of a video. So let's say by Wednesday, you're ready for a review and they say that they would like a first draft in 48 hours. I assume 48 hours of you receiving the video and the footage. And that's the thing. If you receive it on Wednesday, they also want you to be there to do revisions. So let's say it takes you Wednesday to do those revisions. You finish it. Let's say they, they approve it. But then now you're moving on to Thursday and now you're on your second video of the week. But if you count Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 8, 16, 24 hours, because you're working eight hours a day, let's assume, then right there, you already worked over 20 hours, which technically speaking, you're already hitting that part-time time. So the question then to me is, where does the part-time time, the specific time end? Because at the same time, you don't want to go over all those hours if you're not getting paid for those. And not only am I thinking about the time that I'm spending editing, I have to think about how long will it take for all the video clips that I need to upload to Google Drive to download? Are their upload and download speeds good? Are my upload and download speeds good? And then what about all the render times? What about some hiccups that I'm going to get along the way? Like, I know it sounds like I'm thinking too much or I'm kind of like over analyzing it but you really need to factor all this in because that's gonna make it a lot easier for you to really know how to set expectations with a client, the more you can break down the amount of time you're gonna need for everything. And the last thing to bring up with them is the pay. They're not mentioning it anywhere in this job posting, which personally, I don't think anyone that is looking for talent should be able to hide the amount of pay. And I know that there's been people who do it already, even in, even in like the regular uh, work industry, sometimes some companies don't even do that. I still think that's even bad. You know, at the end of the day, I know that not a lot of people still understand that video editing is a career choice. It can be something that we can pursue as a career. So not every job that we take can just be done out of the kindness of our hearts. We have bills to pay. Some of us really are doing this as a career. So we obviously need to get paid for our work. So yeah, just really talk about that and really break down the difference between, look, if, if this is going to be me as a part-timer, what's a part-time pay? What happens when I go over hours? What's a full-time pay look like? And some people have mentioned before, they're like, well, we don't post a job with the pay because we don't want people to only apply for the pay. We want them to care about what we're doing. And it's like, yeah, but exposure doesn't pay the bills. 
So we need to know the pay. All right, so those are all of my concerns. And I'll say right now, if I was looking for work, I would not be applying to this job um, just because this isn't the kind of content I personally like to make. Uh, so I kind of feel like I won't be happy editing this and that might show in the videos. And I, I wouldn't want that for anyone I work with. Now, if you personally would like to apply to this job, go for it. But here are some questions that I personally would ask that I want you to ask as well. Definitely talk about the schedule and ask them about the part-time thing. Really try to break down what their ideal workflow would be like and really see if this is a part-time thing or it might spill into being a full-time thing. Um, and then that's the thing too. Once you figure out those hours, definitely immediately talk about the pay. There isn't a one size fits all when it comes to like how to negotiate pay and whatnot, but just don't be afraid to talk about it because at the end of the day, you have your own bills to pay. So you need to make sure that these jobs fit your financial needs as well. So this next one comes from Didio Media. And I gotta say, this one leaves me with a lot more questions than I have answers. So let's start with first the pros of this job posting, which the first thing is they actually wrote some pay. They're claiming you're gonna get paid anywhere between $100 to $300 per project. And you know, and that's the thing, if you can shoot for the 300 if possible, um, but if not, uh, you know, you decide if the $100 or $300 per project is worth it to you. But of course, remember per project, just ask what they mean by that, just to make sure if it's either per long form YouTube video or if it's including some shorts alongside that. I do like that they wrote exactly what it is they're looking for. So looking for someone to do captions, grading, audio. I mean, some people don't even write it, something as simple as that. And they also have some sample videos linked down in the bottom, which is always good for reference. So good on them for that. So those are all the pros that I have. So now let's actually talk about the concerns, which I feel are more, if anything. Uh, but here's the first thing is that they don't mention what software I'm going to need. I want to know what software it is that they use or expect me to know so I know if I'm qualified for the job. Now, again, if, if they don't care what software I use, they could just write any software applicable or anything like that. So yeah, just write down what software I need to know. Like this is an editing job posting. I need to know the software. Now this next one isn't that big a deal, but they did say in the job requirements that they want the videos in full resolution. So I'm like, okay, do you want them in 1080p? Are you talking about vertical high definition? Are you talking about 4K? Uh, you know, if, if they want to write that, I feel like they can get a little more specific just to make sure that all of us are on the same page with that. Um, but the other thing in the job requirements that I would have expected was again, what are the software? What are the skills I need for this job? Um, yeah, I just, I, I feel like writing anything in there would be more beneficial as opposed to just having, let's see, what is it again? That it must be in full resolution, paced well, and look like a film booth video. Now, here's the biggest concern I have with this posting. So when you look at their actual YouTube channel, you'll notice that there's only one video posted. So I'm like, okay, is this like a company that's starting up? Is this a creator? Uh, like, I just didn't understand. So when I typed in on YouTube, Didio Media, there's another channel that I found with the same person that is in Didio Media's YouTube channel video on the other channel. So my assumption is that this other person has started Didio Media, so they want you to be working for their company. Uh, now, the thing with that though, is just that I just don't understand what the drive is with this channel. Like, I don't understand what the goal is. I don't understand the kind of content that they're intending to make. Like, I am just left with more questions, if anything, that I just feel this was a very rushed job posting where I feel the time wasn't taken to explain what it is that I'm going in for. So I don't like that. And overall, I would give this job posting a four out of 10. I just think that it leaves a lot more questions than it has answers. And I personally would not be applying to this. I would just skip over it. But if you are interested in applying for this job, as always, I recommend you ask some questions such as these. Ask why there is a pay range. What does a hundred dollar video look like over 300? And again, are you looking to make YouTube shorts? Are you looking to make full length uh, YouTube videos that are, you know, your usual five, 10, 20 minute videos, whatever it is that they want. Uh, and then is this a part-time full-time thing? They don't even have that written as well. I just feel like this was a very rushed posting and I'm not happy about it. So I'm not gonna bother with it, but if you are, I wish you the best. All right. Now we're gonna go over what I consider to be a gem of a job posting where you should definitely apply to this one because I definitely would. So this job posting comes from a man named Charles uh, po post Postox, Postal. I don't know how to say that and I'm sorry for butchering it. 
Now, there's a lot to like about this job posting. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into the pros. So the first thing I like is I like that the pay is posted and the range for it is great. Four to $600, that's a perfect beginner's pay. And I can understand the range is a little, it's a little closer. So therefore it just means if you're starting off brand new, maybe they're gonna start you at $400, but as long as you have the skills, you can easily bump that up. Like it's more easier to navigate and understand that as opposed to someone who's like, we're gonna get paid $400 or 1500. It's like, how is there such a big gap? I do like that this is remote as well, so that way anyone can apply. I like how he states how many pieces of content he's looking to have be made a month, as well as that they're gonna be long form videos and they're even talking about their niche. They're talking about the fact that this is educational and business content. And they even state that you will be working with them and collaborate on the channel, meaning they want a partner. They want someone that can be their right hand man who they can brainstorm with. This is the exact relationship that I have with Thomas Frank, which I think is a really good way to approach when it comes to hiring an editor, how you should do it. It should be a collaborative creative process. For both the ideal candidate and the job requirements section, they did a great job in writing what it is they're looking for when it comes to like the skills, the software, and the kind of person that they're hoping to attract. Someone who's willing to learn, who wants to be collaborative. Like, I just, I like that a lot. Now, the last thing is just the vibe that I got from reading all this, looking at the channel. It's just, I just genuinely think this is a really good person who understands the long game when it comes to creating a channel. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to work with someone and grow alongside them if that's something you're interested in, for sure. Now, when it comes to concerns, I mean, the only concerns I have is just that they didn't post any sample videos or any links. So that way it just makes it a little quicker just to quickly go to the channel, look at their videos and whatnot, or even get ideas from channels they like. But other than that, that's it. So go and apply. This is a nine out of 10. It's a perfect kind of job posting that I would want for any of you. So for this last posting, and it's not even a posting, comes from Twitter. Now, thank you to Newell for sending me this through my email because I wasn't able to see it when I got tagged on Twitter for it. But this comes from a guy named uh, Jose Rosado. And Jose posted on Twitter that he was offered a job to edit a video for $4.50. Now, even though I've been editing for as long as I have, I still sometimes get surprised at the audacity of what people think an editor should be making. I remember once getting offered to edit something like, I don't know, I think it was like 10 or 15 YouTube videos for this gaming channel a week. They wanted 10 to 15 videos a week and my pay was gonna be $50 a week. And, and the worst part is they made it seem like they were doing me a favor. Like, hey, come edit for us. This is a great opportunity and we're gonna give you a fair pay of $50 a week. And I was like, are you out of your mind? I don't care if you were a beginner, but you should not be getting that kind of a pay. Like it's just, if you're gonna do it once or twice to just start off your portfolio or whatever, fine. But like you just better stop doing that immediately because remember a lot of these creators and a lot of people, I'm just gonna say people at this point, they just don't know how much to pay an editor and that's fine. It can be tricky, but don't let them start thinking that they can just give us $5 a video. like. The more we accept those kind of jobs, the more uh, normalized that's gonna be, and we don't want that. But all right, those are gonna be all of the job postings I have for this video. Now, as always, if you guys have any questions or if you guys wanna talk about anything, leave it down in the comment section. And again, I will leave a link to these job postings in the description of this video, or maybe I can just have it as like the pinned comment. Either one works. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as I try to stay up to date on those social media sites. Uh, but other than that, have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching.